When did you first play F Zero? After Melee, like everyone else. Like after Melee? You know, when it came on GameCube, it was uh, like F Zero GX. Like, of course, I'm gonna play the Captain Falcon game. I don't even know if I made the connection that F Zero is the game where Captain Falcon is. Because where, where did you think it came from? I, I don't know. <laughs> But, like, I got a Super Nintendo, like, when I was 15, I think, or something. And I played F-Zero. But you never see Captain Falcon in that video game, you see. He's not there. It's just a car. The car is not in Super Smash Bros. Melee. He's very small on the cover. You know what? Back when Smash 64 came out, Mm -hmm. that was just such a move where, like, you will know who this one is if you read the manual of this one game. (laughs) Or... If you played F Zero X, which I think was already released at that point, yeah, oh, yeah because then you can see yeah, the the character portraits yeah, and whatnot. Sure. But like, he doesn't even look like that in Super Smash Bros. No. In the first Super Smash Bros. game, he looks like a little weirdo. You know, it was very beneficial that Smash One just had the bio pages where he said, "Like, what game is this asshole from?" <laughs> Did it have that? It did have that. Oh, it did have that. That's why I knew what Earthbound was when I was nine. Oh, did you play that when you were nine? I played Smash 64 when I was nine. Welcome to Tempered Expectations, the Nintendo podcast where we keep our heads cool and our expectations low. I'm Alicia. I'm your host. And today, we're going to talk about a bunch of fun Nintendo things that happen. But before that, I need to introduce my lovely wife and uh, crime partner. Me? Yes. Kiki. Kiki. I am here because you wanted to make a podcast. <laughs> yes, as YouTubers do. That's just how it goes. It always comes to this, and that's how it goes. This morning... You got a bit mad at, like, the Nintendo rumors because, you know, today is going to be Nintendo Direct and it's not going to be what they're talking about. And and you were like, I got to have, I I need a Nintendo podcast. I need to just vent about this stuff. I need to rant. They need to temper their expectations. And that's what it is. It's just kind of like a more down low podcast. We're never going to be like, I'm going to predict that they're going to release an entirely new Kid Icarus game and it's going to have online multiplayer with 500 players at once. It's it's about time for another Ice Climber, you know? Yeah, it's about time for another. It is about time for another Ice so, Climber. So that's why we're doing this. Yes. We're going to we're gonna talk about the latest news and we're going to, you know, kind of prod at it in a, more of like a, a way where... We don't have all these high hopes or whatever. We're gonna try to just kind of look at things realistically and kind of just look at how Nintendo would do stuff so from the lens of them like, being a company. You know? I think this is uh, how I would describe it is a uh, cynical and awful podcast <laughs> where we talk about the latest things. How often will it come out? Who knows? That's not important. It's called tempered expectations because we need to learn better how to... Uh, hyper-responsibly. Yeah, hyper-responsibly. That's a good way of we've, putting it. We've had it with this fucking direct predictions. We've had it with the direct predictions also. With, um, with this new direct, of course, together with the last one, there is a new leaker in town. A, a person who, uh, compared to people like these these uh, absolute cretins with names like uh, Marco Moro and whatever. Samus he, Hunter, Silas Hunter. Samus whatever. Hunter. Oh, God. Well, anyway, the point is that this person seems to have a perfect track record. So uh, this person is called Pioro, named Pioro. after a little bird creature from WarioWare. Yes. Who predicted, well, not predicted, predicted what clearly. You, 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 you came clean before the last Direct in June 2023 about a remake of a Super Nintendo game and a Super Mario, Wonder. Mario game, 2D Mario game. Yes. Wonder keyword. Yes. Uh, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, Super Mario RPG came out. Or came out, they they were announced, and now in the lead up to this one, there was Donkey Kong fighting Mario, yeah, and it had minis. Mario versus Donkey Kong, basically. And there was F Zero, and someone <laughs> said F Zero ninety nine, and this person liked it. 
There was also 3DS and Wii remaster. Yeah. Someone said another code. They yes. liked it. You have a theory. I have a theory you about Puro. Like, about wh- who is Puro and where do they get their uh, Information sources? From. Because Puro is very, very confident. Interesting. Interestingly <laughs> confident. Just goes berserk on Twitter. No gives names. Gives all the stuff very confidently. Not super firm. There are a lot of like playing around so, ARG yeah. bullshit is being like putting... He's playing around with the language of being a leaker. Yes. Because as you might know, a lot of leakers do like, oh, fans of green will be very excited yeah. this year. And like, it's very vague. But his points, of course, have a have a direct through line this yeah. time. That's what I would say. Yeah, a few select nuggets that are all close future nothing's like oh they're working on this who knows when we're gonna see it exactly. so, so they're very firm in that sense it's and always there was nothing that did not come true in that sense yeah it's always a uh, few days before a direct yeah. but it's this also the thing where kind of like people have to kind of interpret it decode it but it's too specific to just be a prediction like this is a firm source so my i, I noticed this thing last time there was like one big game that was not predicted and that's Princess Peach Showtime, which Puro this time also wrote Princess Peach Showtime in yeah, Japanese. Yeah, the title. So you know about that. But big thing this time, big reveal, not at all predicted was Paper Mario Thousand Year Door. So I uh, realized one thing. Well, the Princess Peach game last time was untitled. There was no title. So there was no like logo or anything, no listing. When I downloaded F099, I noticed that Paper Mario Thousand Year Door... It's not on the, you know, Nintendo store shop. store listing. Yeah. I think that's it. I think this person, either on some Nintendo server or like some other web shop, something, you know, like just has the upcoming store listing uploads. Yeah. They're going to appear that's what they have because they don't know the stuff that's not gonna go on the store listings it is possible it, it, it seems keep an eye on it though yeah yes the next time they come out with some hot new garbage well leaks still no matter how good the track record <laughs> never trust. never go 100 percent on yeah. trust no never do that temper your expectations temper now. your expectations but because they now have a proven track record compared to a lot of other people like this is a solid chunk of like games just coming out in a direct mm. obviously I think it's important to then mention that if you have a problem with this, uh, you should probably block and mute this person. I don't uh, think that's going to do much. because No, the, the, of the, course. People are going to talk about it. was all over. So Mario vs. Donkey Kong, of course, one of the leaked games. We weren't sure exactly what kind of Donkey Mario vs. Donkey Kong game it was going to be. However... It was uh, surely going to be Mario vs. Donkey Kong. Yeah, and I was kind of surprised that it was a remake of the first one. But yeah, I was kind of expecting it to be some new one, because it, th- that feels like one of those games where it's just kind of easier to just make a new one. You just kind of yeah. cobble something together and throw in a bunch of new stages, maybe some new fun gimmick. Yeah. But they were playing it... Sa- safe? I don't know if this is playing it safe, actually. It seems a, bit, a little bit like... Do people care about, about it Kong. being a remake or not? I kind of feel I like this know. is almost like a new game. I mean, I played that game back when it came out. I don't remember much. Although... Of it. Like, this this is like a new one for me. Yeah. Although, if you think about it, Mario vs. Donkey Kong is a series that have a bit of a bad reputation in the end. You know yeah. how every subsequent sequel has like gotten a bit less favorable... Critiques. They kind of went away from the little more Donkey Kong classic platformer, yes. Donkey Kong 94 yeah, goodness. So, yeah, so I still think this one... Acrobatic Mario. Yeah, I still think this one is the most popular one. So in, in that sense, it's a lot like a, a sequel to Donkey Kong 94. I think, I think it's a good move. I, I think it this is, a good is move. fine. I, uh, I think this is good. <laughs> it's one of those games where it's like it's not an obvious pick. No. It's a bit of a wild card. You would never expect it, uh, but, really. But still, it's a left field from a fan's perspective. perspective. <laughs> Just something they don't think about. Yeah. That is still realistic because, yeah, th- this is pervasive. This has been around. There are plenty of Mario vs. Donkey Kong games. The last yeah. one was the Wii one with the Amigos, right? Amigos? Amigos. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> we played it a little bit. I thought it was fine. Like that's they are the thing. all fine games. They're all fine games, and I don't think that's bad. I I like when games are but okay. Like, I like these specifically because of how it's more like Donkey Kong ninety four, where it has a lot of Mario movement that is a lot of fun. You do the collecting of the keys, and you like open little hatches, and the monkey falls down, and you pick on his tail so you can go over to the other side. It's very nice. I just love when you climb vines oh yeah with two, with two hands, hands like <laughs> donkey kong jr every yeah. time i see that my ape brain just goes Ooh. yeah the important thing about this game of course there has been a rumor going around for like two years two years may 2021 someone says there's a new donkey kong game coming out so like internal nintendo development donkey kong game 2d game and then someone else says no, no I, I thought it was actually a 3d game at first there was like this little leak rumor about it. Didn't really catch a lot of attention. Then someone reported on that again, like you reacted it's to it. It's done. And you said the same thing again. And because yeah. there was like two news about the same source, that corroborated itself. And then everyone talked about it. And then it became <laughs> like <laughs> reality. Reality, yeah. <clears throat> Is this that? We don't know. We will never know. We will never know, actually, because that was such a dubious rumor, like 2D Donkey Kong, maybe, and immediately someone says 3D Donkey Kong, maybe. So it's just off to the fields of dreams, you know, it can be anything. And then someone else, of course, also said that 3D Donkey Kong, internally developed by Nintendo, it's done. And then nothing happens. I also like the thing where people (laughs) were talking about Nintendo... Are the ones who are making a Donkey Kong. There's designated like Nintendo ED or whatever. Designated Donkey Kong developers. When was the last Donkey Kong game they made? Jungle Beat. Jungle Beat. Yeah. <laughs> Two thousand four. So, so I get the connection. <laughs> the connection they're trying to make. But I think they're busy with other things. Yeah. My my thing is mostly that I don't think that was ever true. I don't think there ever was a Donkey Kong 2D, 3D game. And that doesn't mean both this game existing and this rumor not being true. I don't think that means that there isn't another Donkey Kong game. I think that's important to keep in mind. Because we kind of have to understand, I think, that there there might be something else. However, it might not be a good idea to just sit and be like... Oh, this time. This time we're gonna see the Donkey Kong game. You probably have heard some, like, Nintendo YouTubers and stuff talk about it and say, like, this is when the Donkey Kong game is gonna be made. The Donkey Kong game. The one. You know the one. The only one. It's like, but you don't even know if it exists. And at this point, I don't think it does. I think the whole thing is that it has to exist. That's the hope. (laughs) Yeah, of course. Because otherwise... all is lost. Donkey Kong is dead. There will never be another Donkey Kong game. Yeah, because as we've seen with other franchises like Pikmin and and Kid Icarus and all of that stuff. Don't don't think about how they actually had Diddy Kong and Funky Kong and don't worry about that. Yeah, don't don't worry about that stuff. (laughs) The whole like what's going on with Donkey Kong has such a clear, easy answer that it's ridiculous that there even is so much fear mongering going on about this. So, who is making the Donkey Kong games? Who was making them previously? Mm. The latest one, Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze. And Returns. That's a Retro Studios game. So they released that game. What happened after that? It's a radio silence mystery. What happens in between... uh, Tropical Freeze. Tropical Freeze and them being thrown onto Metro Prime 4. Because this is the thing. This period of like five years. Yeah. That's a good amount of time Mm. to develop something or at least have an idea of coming along where they're going. I think though there were there were talk about there being internal struggles inside of Retro Studios for a while as well. Well, uh, but I think at some point Retro Studios gets thrown onto Metroid Prime 4. They were not supposed to develop that game, but when that original development went into the crapper, someone had to take up the scraps. And that was Retro Studios. What were they developing for that? No idea. However, they were the Donkey Kong people. And I think that's important to remember because seeing what happened after they took <laughs> took care of Metroid Prime instead, no Donkey Kong game. You need to think in the long game as well that when Retro took that up, 
it's very possible that they were like, we still have dibs on Donkey Kong. We don't want to like hand it over to someone else and then we can't do it anymore. Yeah. It's just very reasonable, you know. I think it's also like the problem of doing that is that they must have dropped something because I think it was ho- yeah, all hands it was on deck. Yeah, it was just like put on ice yeah. for later. Like, like you inch- never know. The, the point is anyway that I think what has happened to Donkey Kong is yeah. that Metroid Prime 4 happened and that was a disaster someone needed to pick up the slack all hands on deck for retro studios on metro prime 4 who is gonna pick up that series and make another donkey kong game there probably and maybe wasn't anyone to pick up that slack you see what i mean there could be someone else making a donkey kong game but it doesn't seem like there was anyone picking it up And I think that's something that happens with a lot of Nintendo series in general. You kind of just have to feel it out. Where where does the resources uh, get placed? I think a reasonable approach to Nintendo in general. They're an old company. They've gone from the days when you could make a game in like an afternoon to now. (laughs) They have experimented and expressed themselves. A lot of people working on those games throughout the years you know a lot of different interests and everything and that's just kind of you go go on to something else you leave stuff behind things kind of fall out of vogue nintendo at the moment right now do not have and will never have the facilities to upholster every single franchise they have and even if they had a dedicated developer for every single one of them you still need a full development cycle for each and every game you yeah know? at least a that big becomes one. four to five or even six years depending on the size of it like you know very transparent on the development of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom we know how long that took because you know the only thing they made before that was Breath of the Wild you have the receipts you know you have the years yeah. you can you can calculate it, takes it yourself long. video game development takes time I think that's the most important thing it takes too. longer than you imagine one game yes that you were, would not anticipate hey? until it happened this summer and mm-hmm. we show so so more now was Princess Peach Showtime. Yeah. If you had predicted the that back in game. back in like January, you would have when I made a, to something. when I made the <laughs> Princess Peach video on our channel. That's Prophetic. Pretty, because I've talked about for a while when I was making that video. If you somehow stumble into this and you don't know who we are, <laughs> Transparency is our real channel. You should probably watch that. Instead. Transparency boo. The thing is, though, that I think partly this is thanks to the movie. As the you Mario can see movie. through the entire Nintendo Direct, Mario Mania is happening at this moment. Yeah. The only one that doesn't get the platinum treatment, I would say, at the moment is Donkey Kong, who is like, at least he gets something. Donkey Kong uh, is contextualized through Mario now. Exactly. Donkey Kong is a Mario character But, but the, reason, the reason why there is a Mario vs. Donkey Kong remake is because of the movie, I think. Yeah. Partly. Anyway, the Peach game. Princess Peach Showdown. Showtime. Showtime. Show, <laughs> show showdown. Down. She's gonna fucking kill well, you. Well, she does some martial arts stuff. Yeah. I, I did like the the sword fencer yes. peach. Very uh, reminiscent of... Osama uh, Tezuka's Princess Knight. Yes. Very uh, cool. I like that. Iconic. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, okay. So it's like a, one of those theater-themed games where there are Ballad a lot Wonder of... Wonderworld. <laughs> yeah. Princess Peach Showtime. Yeah. <laughs> puppeteer yeah whatever paper mario (laughs) yeah paper mario that's very cool and i instantly thought like oh that's gonna be like a thing you're gonna switch up the the places and and do some theatrical things that you couldn't otherwise and putting peach in different outfits and giving her different powers is uh brilliant it's awesome uh, especially They're from the kind of leaning into the feminine stereotype that like this is a game for girls and you know what girls like <laughs> <Dresser>. clothes 
dress up. Like, I wouldn't even say it's necessarily the stereotype thing. I think uh, it's fine. From, from, from the perspective of Nintendo being a company, I think it's more like, it is a stereotype, obviously, but it's also from the demographic of what sells. Yeah, it's a stereotype uh, that makes money. And it, yes, it is an it observation is. that clearly uh, gets them somewhere. Yeah, probably. and like, I think it's a good move. I think it's fine. Like, I, I don't criticize them having costumes for Peach. Like, come the <laughs> fuck on. <laughs> it's good too, because the costumes are also very uh, fun, in a way. Where it's, uh, like the first one, like we said, the fencer one. Yeah. And then you have a... Detective. Yeah, detective one. And uh, like a baker. Yeah. Yeah, I like that it just changes the whole theme and vibe of the game, seemingly. Yeah. Because I was just like, it's going to be theater stuff. And then she's like, I'm going to the museum to have a mystery. It's just like, huh. Yeah, it's fun. Maybe it still is in a theater framing, but I like that. It seems interesting. It seems exciting. It's going to be her putting on different roles and whatnot. It's going to be like a page turner game where you're like, I wonder what comes now. Yeah. And I think it's a good one because Peach, of course, is a very uh, stereotypical character. One that I think has, for various reasons, of course gotten a bad rap as a very plain and boring character flat let's just say like an iconic side character who has become yes. so iconic and important that it's like critical mass she kind of needs to just have her own game again guys yeah <laughs> i think the mario movie is part of the reason why this is happening because moving into the realm of giving peach more to do a bigger role Things of her own. Like I said in the video about Princess Peach, there is no reason to just keep her locked up anymore. Because there are games where she is just as capable as everyone else. And it's more fun to have Peach be a character that does things. Define her. Princess Peach is now stronger than Mario. And I think (laughs) that's just fine. You know, some people complained about that video about Princess Peach and said that I was wrong because Peach is not that strong of a character and whatever. And now she's back in Super Mario Bros. Wonder and... She has her own game. Like, she has so many power-ups in this one. She's fucking a martial artist and a fencer. She's a Barbie. She can be anything. Just like every other Mario character, they're designed to be like theater characters. This is like brilliant from, from that perspective. Like these are actors. The they sequel can be put to in Super everything. Mario Bros. 3. <laughs> Basically, I think this is exactly what I wanted to see. Peach being playable in the 2D Mario you game. You know what? Thank you. Whatever we had like when we released the Peach video, that was like, oh, well, maybe she's going to have a role in the Mario movie. Yeah, and we we're not were hoping. Fuck it up. That was like my biggest just expectation. I would not have guessed that we would see this. I just wouldn't. I would never really consider it. So this is neat. I like this. This is probably the most uh, interesting game coming up. I think so. Right now, so far. I think it's nice that Nintendo have realized that women also have money. And that they also want to have a playable character. You know what? This is Uh, like the most forward-thinking one of the bunch. A lot of remakes and remasters and re-releases and like things that just kind of harken back to something old. And of course Peach is an old character. It is a Mario game. Yeah, classic. But it is kind of rephrasing that character in a new, previously unexplored ways. This feels like a pretty refreshing new thing. I like it. I like it. Yeah. It's neat. At the very least, I think that the writing after the movie was kind of on the wall. Like, the fact that we were seeing Peach take on a role in that movie, I think that was just a natural step forward. We're gonna move on, and then Super Mario Wonder, she's playable, because I think one of the developers in an interview said that you just have These one... two daughters they... fighting or playing as Peach. Yes, like, you should have these characters, but not just one. That's the thing. That's, that's why you add Daisy. Forever. Like, it's been a thing since you could play these games with several characters. Yeah. You gotta have the representation. You can't just have the token girl. Because what happens when there is two girls? The, the easiest way to avoid token girl syndrome is to make two girls. Yeah. Because, oops, now you gotta make one that's not token girl. And now you, know? you so, gotta I, distinguish them. And you know, Easy I, peasy. like I said before, I think it's has been a travesty, really, that for two whole new Super Mario Bros. game where you could play multiplayer, there was just a bunch of fucking guys. 
like why would you do that as some, as a developer some, some like, like pr team at nintendo were like holding them at gunpoint like you can't release new super Mario Bros. u without a girl character please add peach and they're like but she's captured she's we have the, the cinematics we can't change this and they're like i don't care how you do it. So they had a yeah. toe that with the peachette mushroom. But that's just bullshit. Yeah, that's, a, that's not... Peachette is such a that, like weird yeah, compromise that, but, character. But that's, that's not fine. That? In Super Mario Bros. Wonder, at least, we have Peach, we have Daisy, we have Toadette. Perfect. That's good. Great. Thank you. Like, finally, finally. we're getting somewhere. And then we have the Peach game, and I think this is just like, this is... Where, of course, we should temper our expectations. Yes, because I'm but... not expecting more after this. I don't know. Maybe they will make a Peach showdown too. I will to show I, I will at least say that I think that this is going to set a standard for the multiplayer games. That I don't think they will release a Super Mario... I don't think Mar- they're going to back to... I'm, no, I don't think they're going to release a, a, a platforming Super Mario Bros. game. Where you don't play where as Where you Peach. don't play as Peach. I think those and game days I think, are over. I think Daisy has also a good chance. So Daisy fans, of course, cool the expectations. But Temper I think she might... It seems realistic. ...have a good chance to actually be a bigger character because now. Because Nintendo and I think that's wants great. to just be the family company. And it makes no sense to not have like reasonable expectation. You know what a family usually has? More than one woman. Yes. Uh, like you said, it's important. Like the whole representation thing. And I think Nintendo has... In a non-confrontational way where they're trying to get... You know the people who got really mad about uh, Starfield having pronouns? They're trying to skid around those people by having like... There's no gender pronouns at all. And it's like, you know, where you choose a style, for example. It's corporate and spineless. But I I think that the gender neutralness of current Nintendo games is also pretty nice sometimes because if you go into animal crossing for example and they don't put any emphasis on it and then you just put on dresses and whatever and it's like oh here you go i think this is just another part of that where we see people having trouble with peach being a um, character that some people still think is just to be rescued but clearly there is uh, more to be gained from having her appear as uh, necessary and uh, and a obvious ad- uh, addition. You have a weird note here. <laughs> Contra Operation Galuga. No, no, no. Contra Operation Galuga. 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 Something we would say. Yeah. Uh, my only note on this one is better have a protector. So, robots. Look, my thing about this one is my reason to put this here is because this is where every time someone talks about Konami, you should probably not expect a lot. Because when they put this out there, I just noticed that, holy shit, this game is shogging a whole lot. And then I noticed that, isn't it pretty funny that that game looks like a game? That they forgot that they had. And it's like, oh, we finished this an for Xbox the... Xbox fr- Live yeah. Arcade game. Yeah, it looks like an Xbox Live Arcade game. You know, for like, like 2007. Yeah. Load Runner, Bionic Commander yes. Rearmed. That, that sort of era where they're like, we take an old game. Yeah, some and we easy make assets. a bunch of like... 3D stuff. I'm not gonna play it. <laughs> I'm not gonna play it. I just think it's funny that they that <laughs> they put fun. it out there because it looks it looks awful. It, I'm gonna... it, I, I just find it funny because a lot of people don't think about that era of Xbox Live arcade games. They had uh, a certain aesthetic. They you know? had a certain aesthetics because and it I had think, to be small. Yeah, there was a file uh, size limit. Yeah, and they always made them in 3D despite that. I also think this was like an early HD thing yes. where they didn't really no, know exactly. how <laughs> to approach that because all of a sudden games were higher fidelity, newer screens and everything, you know, like yeah. they, they had to look a new way. And a lot of games looked strange because they were too crystal clear all of if a you go if you go back and look at some of those they almost look like fake unity projects <laughs> you know when someone's like oh here's my zelda 2 remake in in unity and it has like the backgrounds that stretch so far behind that it has some like added assets in the back and it looks really strange because he's still walking on a little 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 layer in the front 
What is happening here? Like the DuckTales remake game. Oh my god. But that one... <laughs> that was sprites. It, at least that had some sprites. The trombone champ one. Not very particular, special. You know, <laughs> it's a game that's already been out. I just had, when we watched it, my brain for like three seconds saw the picture of the trombone guys. And it's just like, Wii Music. I just sat up and you were like... Do no, you think they're not. doing Wii Music? And he's just like, hey, yeah, I thought they were doing yeah, Wii Music. But no, they didn't do Wii Music. What's funny is, though, on our bingo card, uh, we had Miyamoto, no, please. And that <laughs> would be would that. that would have been that part. Miyamoto didn't show up. No, he he's, was busy being Charles Martinet, <laughs> which is the conspiracy theory, of course. Of course, of course. That uh, he is secretly... Charles Martinet. Also, the Tomb Raider 1, 2, 3 remaster. I think that's neat. I that's think nice. it's cute that they do this thing now where they bring back old like PS1 games or whatever. I guess Tomb Raider 1 was a Saturn game first. For, I think like, this two might weeks. be the PC version though. Uh, it Maybe. probably is. Uh, I because don't you think can have higher resolution. Yeah, the, the, like the old graphics, new graphics, the old graphics, that's not actually the old graphics. <laughs> I think it's cute. I think it's neat that you're bringing these back in like a way yeah. That just can acknowledge is that you, you want the chunky polygons, you know. Yeah, but without tampering too much with it as well. You know, it's just like putting a coat of paint on it. Yeah. And I think what's funny is it has that old downloadable content uh, yeah. vibe, like the live arcade thing and yeah. whatever. But a bit later, you know, when you had like, oh, here's a game where you can switch it up and it looks still <laughs> kind of wank. But that's great. Like, I just love that stuff. I would, of course, play them in the chunky old graphics because that's the yeah. way to go. Although I would just play the original ones. Of course. Because I'm, on the PlayStation. I'm, I'm a purist. Yeah. A hopeless purist. Uh, I think it's nice, though, because that's what I would have hoped Nintendo would do more of. You know? I love when they, when they have the whole, like... Well, Here's what it looked like on. before. Yeah. Although this one isn't that. I just like the idea, at least. At least it is more accurate and true mm -hmm. to the original. Like, if they release an old game, I want to be able to see the old stuff. This is our thing about remakes and stuff in general. I don't like when they tamper with that shit. You should be proud of that fucking game, you motherfuckers. <laughs> Like, when you look at the Crash you Bandicoot you, remaster you, you, you stuff... You can't like throw in a ROM. Like no, but, like, when you look at the Crash Bandicoot stuff, for example, it's just sad to me when they leave all that good stuff behind. Because these games were thought out to work on those systems in a way that I think should be appreciated. Another game that wasn't in the Western Direct yeah. is Stray Children from Onion Games, which yeah, is Moon uh, Two. basically Moon 2, which mm. is just neat. And that's also coming localized... I don't know why it wasn't on our direct. It was only in the Japanese It was probably one. not ready to be shown. Yeah, but because they, they don't they, have. They, they wrote own... on Twitter right afterwards, like, "Yeah, this is this is coming. It's coming. Uh, don't worry about it." I think the reason why they didn't is because they only have Japanese text. Still, maybe. they that's probably actually... don't have. They probably don't have English text. That's yet. probably it. You know. Um, that is not, and the same probably, thing, of yeah. course, with some other things. But I'm glad because I wasn't expecting them to bring it over here. Yeah. So once again, that's uh, our expectations being met, uh, but also crushed. Our, our expectations were wrong. Good. Yeah. That game also looks like an old PlayStation game, which yeah. I think is nice. I think that's nice. In a funny way where it has some pre-rendered backgrounds yeah. and stuff. It looks very interesting. It looks very nice. There were a bunch of other games. Like, we're not going to talk about all of them. There was, of course, a Uden Chronicle 100 Heroes. Kind of looks like an HD 2D game. I hate those. Yeah. So I looked at this and he's just like... So you just need to mention <laughs> it. You just need to mention it. They're gonna keep popping up now. I, uh, I am still waiting for them to make a Chrono Trigger <sighs> HD 2D game. And I know that that's gonna be the culmination of it all. They're gonna <sighs> destroy Chrono Trigger. They're just gonna make it look like fucking dog shit. They're gonna take yeah. beautiful old games and make them look like fucking bargain bean diarrhea crap. Makes me sad. Makes it was another VanillaWare game also. Instantly, I, when I saw the first character on screen, I was like, that <laughs> looks you, like you a VanillaWare game. You saw the yeah. cooking. And then I was like, this is a VanillaWare game. Unicorn Overlord, it's called. Who cares? My though? Little Pony. That's not important. Are we going because back that's to of course, Nintendo? As we all know, in a Nintendo Direct, all of that 
is, is filler. filler. I hate that. I hate <laughs> when that people word. People call it filler. It's so funny because like these are like games that have been developed and this is just a commercial spot, like a glorified commercial yeah. spot that Nintendo put their own, you know, like actual flagship titles. You know, the ships in the Armada that bolstered other ships. They you mean put like them the, in they're their... the pawns. Yeah. They're, they're like, they throw them out to die. It is filler from the perspective of well, from a Nintendo showcase perspective, Nintendo... it's not 40 minutes of Nintendo no, no, no. stuff. No. no, but they want you to see that. No one's yeah. going to watch the Nintendo Direct and be interested in every single game. No. You're lying. It's not every day you get a vanillaware game. Yeah. That's a treat, dude. That's not yeah. filler. You don't always you... get the games you want to see, but surely there's always something interesting. I think if you watch a Direct and like seriously nothing in it interested you, I think maybe you should just be like, well, they're not going to make it, Icarus. Try something new. This it's is... funny because F-Zero has had his reputation of being dead in the grave, will never come back. Miyamoto has personally put a curse on it that like, yeah. if anyone even tries, they will die. Yeah. So it is impossible for them to make another F-Zero game. They will never do it. They can't it's do impossible. it. And then they did. I still think it's true what Miyamoto said, where he very candidly said that there simply hasn't been an idea that has made a team over at Nintendo excited enough to, like, make something. I just think that's true to some extent. I think this might be, like, the same reason why there hasn't been a wave race or a 1080 snowboarding, for example. Maybe a lot of developers at Nintendo internally don't really want to make racing games yeah. you gotta know and understand nintendo's approach in game development because they're very loose and open about like ideas and you know workshopping and you know like the concept stage they will come up with some fun neat idea they might do it as like an iteration on an old game but they will always be kind of open on like this is idea first and then we kind of add aesthetics on top of it and it becomes an installment of something and i think the problem with this is that if you are having racing game ideas i think that just gets pivoted into mario kart i think that's just the way of it yeah it's selling so well the pr department are also gonna be a little bit like can't we make this mario kart because mario kart is making a lot of money yeah Uh, and then they add the fucking mario kart 8 uh, anti-gravity stuff and such also around the early 3d era that's when they were making a lot of vehicle games because that was a safe bet vehicle games were more proof for 3d you just kind of up the fidelity that's why i had star fox you had pilot Mm -hmm. wings but you also had racing ish games you had f-zero but you also had excite bike you had 1080 1080, you had wave race Stunt race epics. Yeah. You you had a bunch of vehicle games. One of the problems with the early 3D games was no one knows how to make it. Yeah, you don't know how to make a 3D game. But racing games have been around for a long time. And they are very They were already kind of doing it. They were already kind of doing 3D. The static camera, perfect. Yeah. It's right behind the character. Perfect. You just follow a track easy so nintendo 64 era had a lot of that stuff yeah, but then you, it kind you of fizzles out like yeah. gamecube had a way race it had a 1080 but it didn't have an excite bike there was excite truck later but like you kind of fizzle it out because then you kind of start figuring out 3d games more yeah. there's no longer the same need for it so a lot of those old franchises just kind of got left in the dust f-zero was one of them i think it was just kind of like it's neat We'll maybe make something if we have an idea for it. Yeah. And that's the thing. They finally had the idea, I guess. This could also be a marketing thing because I think they're also kind of fueled by demand. My immediate thought with F099, that is a boldness on Nintendo's part. They're not sending F0 out to die. Seriously, stop. You know what a 99 game is? It's 100 people. Playing a game at the same time, concurrently. They're banking on you being able to play this game with a hundred F-Zero fans. They know people care about it. That's ballsy. You don't see Nintendo Detective Club 99, not because it's, (laughs) what would that even be, but because like, 
Are there 99 <laughs> Nintendo Detective Club <laughs> fans? This series hasn't been doing much since the third Game Boy Advance game, which, of course, people forget pretty Climax. often because it's not... It was only uh, in Japan. It was only in Japan. Yes. F-Zero GX, of course, was not made by Nintendo themselves internally. And that was Sega. a Sega game. <laughs> That's why uh, it was good. I think that already there you're kind of seeing the cracks, right? Where there needs to be someone making them and whatnot. The thing with that game is it's Namco perfect. and Sega, yeah. they're making a group project for Nintendo. And Nintendo is like, oh, they're neat. One thing we need to kind of understand is that with Nintendo, nothing is ever impossible. No. Their catalog is vast. And if there is an idea, it might happen. I think, for example, the reason why they keep their catalog of classics available and has done so since the Wii is precisely because they want them to be in the... Collective consciousness. Yes. They want people to see them. When people say that there hasn't been any F-Zero games, I'm like, yes, no new ones. However, on NSO, there is F-Zero and there is F-Zero X. We're going to get F-Zero maximum velocity. That's on GBA eventually. I think all of those games, and the same goes for Star Fox, for example, that just keeps you remembering yeah. these games. Uh, I mean, Smash Bros. Yeah. There was an F-Zero reference in the Mario movie. Like, they sprinkle them in because it's part of, like, the Ninten- Nintendo identity. Nintendo. Here's the thing also that's probably going to be, like, a recurring thing of this entire show. I'm 31. You are 32. Damn. We have been Nintendo fans for a long time. And I think with time, you kind of learn that nothing is impossible with Nintendo. There are a lot of obvious things now that were once upon a time impossible unthinkable, unthinkable. Yeah. like it, just in recent years we have seen the return of games like advance wars or pikmin or even switch sports you know <laughs> people were saying that there's no way it can't happen but back in the day things like donkey kong country returns was like oh my god yeah. they're doing that no way and i've learned that like yeah these I've ha- seen it all, yeah. you know? I've seen a bunch of shit come out. Pikmin was dead before. And then it came back. And then it was dead, and I again. guess, again. And then it came back. I never considered it dead the second time. No, 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 absolutely not. I knew it wasn't. There are, of course, Nintendo franchises that are more dormant than others. And, of course, you shouldn't expect them. Still holding out no, for Ice Climber. No, look, you shouldn't expect them to come back. However... It is never impossible. It's never impossible. I think there are a lot of series that also have a lot of pull internally at Nintendo, like Pikmin, for example, where you have Miyamoto himself behind it. You can see that. Like, I think a lot of Nintendo is is kind of fueled by a reverence for their old past. You just need to balance it. They can't continue doing only the fan favorites all of the time. And that's the thing, though. People just kind of assume that they have forgotten F-Zero. No. They have considered it pointless. You can't do it. The constantly recurring thing of, this is the last chance. This is it. (laughs) This is the last one. Metroid (laughs) Prime Federation Force. Oh, Metroid is over. Hey, Pikmin, it's over. There will never be another one. It's always that stuff. But it's not true. I also think that could be said for Mario vs. Donkey Kong, the remake now. I think that might be their... Hey, Pikmin slash Federation Force moment. For Donkey where, Kong. Yeah, yeah, where they're going to say like, this is it. It's over. There's never going to be... Because we're entering Doomer mode. When in reality, I think we just need to be aware that compared to like Call of Duty or something, yeah. some of these games just won't come out. On a yearly the, yeah, schedule. Yeah, on a yearly you know? ske- schedule. Some of these games will take five to ten years before they resurface again like with pikmin for example i think that's one of the most clear examples like did you know dear listener that pikmin 1 and 2 has been available for every single nintendo system a stationary systems since the gamecube so there was a GameCube once, obviously, yeah. original. There were then the Wii, Wii one? New Control. New Controls. A game that was then on the Wii U eShop. You yeah. could just download them and play them. And now they're doing it again. And I think those are important. Sure, they're not new games, but I think it's important to remember as Pikmin long as this happens. has been available yeah, as long as the, As long as these 
come back. They're not forgotten. Urban Championship and Balloon Fight are remembered by Nintendo. Yeah. Can you believe in that? So F Zero ninety nine. Anyway. The thing with that is, of course, that a lot of people immediately expressed concern, disappointment, and, like, disbelief. I find it funny because the whole idea of a F-Zero Battle Royale was the most common suggestion for years. When Miyamoto said, it's no big idea, no big leap to make, people said, what about online play? F-Zero is a racing game where 30 characters race against each other, at least yeah. in the later ones. And a car um, battling game. Car basically. battling game. Making that an online game makes sense and making that more competitive. Like, what if you used to have a shit ton of players? And they're all battling each other. This is exactly the, the game I had in mind with the Super Nintendo graphics and everything. This was it. Super Nintendo callback F Zero 99 people just Going killing each it. other. Yeah. It was crystal clear from idea conception to realization i didn't even make it but i felt like i made it (laughs) maybe this is just the first step then climax is no longer the latest f-zero game now the latest f-zero game is f-zero 99 from today sure it is not purchasable on the online store and that's a bummer because that of course means that it could disappear at any moment and that's of course an expectation that you can have mm. i don't think it's unreasonable to expect that this will disappear at some point although i don't think it might be the same way as with super mario 99 super mario 35 was yeah, 35, a 35th was year called. anniversary thing. promotion that, that was the thing yeah. 35 was the central titular number yeah. and that's probably why and the reason why it was just a little promo and, and why the reason why of pac-man 99 that's is leaving uh, is because that's not Namco nintendo thing. Thing. Yeah, probably. And there was uh, also like a promotional yeah. thing, I guess. Uh, and we, I guess we'll see. Tetris has remained. Yeah, I, I guess we'll see if this one gets updated. I with think more it's going to be, probably. Oh. I think it still counts as a new game. And I think that's important from the perspective of this means not the death of the series. This means that Nintendo have it in their mind at the very least. They know. They know. This is the <laughs> most clear ass sign that they know. Like, it still they might see take... see you, they know, but they can't respond on a whim. They can't hop into your <laughs> YouTube but what video about years, comment Kiki? section and saying, Don't worry, f is coming soon. <laughs> but, like, I still think there is gonna be a F-Zero GX remaster. Because as we've seen Maybe. so far... Temper your expectations. They... they are pumping those GameCube games out. They are. And I think that's just a well that will keep on giving uh, for a while. I think they're gauging now. They're gauging interest in F-Zero. They're kind of reviving. I think making a free-to-play F-Zero game as the first new F-Zero game... I mean... It's... Well, this is a game that kind of lands in a lot of people's laps. Uh, And I think that's probably a good first step. Because you kind of need to start a little bit from scratch with like fostering and interest here. Yeah. So we played that a little bit before recording. And it was neat. Like I like the callbacks to the Super Nintendo little announcer tutorial guy. The artwork. The artwork is really neat. From the manual. Huh. A lot of little fun things you can do. It was like the team battle. And then you, if you die, you can just fuck with people. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little fun. annoyance on the road. Yeah. I think that this game is probably a testing bed for like the idea of maybe future projects or something. Even if you don't really gel with this game, and I'm gonna come clean, we played it a little bit and I just know that I'm not gonna play this again because I don't really care. But I think this is positive. F-Zero stocks are the highest event since 2006. And that's great. <laughs> yeah, you know? because they've been at the bottom. Kind of showing like, that... We have to, of course, acknowledge that they have been rock bottom. They have been before. <laughs> but like, I think it's important to at least know that they haven't forgotten about F-Zero. In some yeah, th- th- there's also like the fan expectations and the reality what you get isn't always... Th- they don't always convene a fan will be like they gotta make a new one that's exactly like f-zero x gx i mean and it's gotta have all that stuff and everything that's a pretty substantial game to make that was a very juicy rich game uh, <laughs> juicy. A, a lot of 
development would have to be put into a game like that today and it's not a safe bet it wasn't back on gamecube either the gamecube didn't do particularly well and i actually think maybe f-zero wasn't the right call at that time it was good that they made it because it's a good game and we have that now but i think nintendo became more cautious after that fans will always go back to the classic the smash representation games you know whatever was in smash one or like melee that those are like the games fans are gonna be like yeah this is like the nintendo used like to the, the real nintendo franchises yeah <laughs> this is what we're always expecting but then sometimes you don't get it in the way you you expect and sometimes you get something else and one something else that came today was another code yeah Another the, code. The, 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 the classic remake DS of a game. classic DS game. And that was something you would never see, you know, someone predict. Because it doesn't really fit into the, the picture of like, oh, these are like the classic Nintendo stuff. It's a game you forget Nintendo made. And I even think that this also shows that it's not always necessarily about the money. No. Like, is this a million seller? It's the no. catalog thing. Yeah. Like, I don't think... I, I don't think... Your portfolio. I, I don't think that the, the recollection... Recollection. Which is That's a, a really recollection, nice Which name. is a funny name. Because it, of course, uh, includes the DS game and the Wii game. Yeah. And I just think this is one of those, like the Famicom Detective Club, where it's like, it's not gonna sell millions of copies. Yeah. But... It is a nice thing to have in your catalog. And a lot of people liked another code as well back it, in the name. I bet you there's a I lot of people right now who have never heard about this game because they were like five years old when it came out. Their perception of like 2006, five, <laughs> seven ish game landscape is just that like we sports. New Super Mario Bros. But like, yeah. this is teenage core for me. I never played it back then, yeah. but this was like forum avatars and everything. You saw yeah, this yeah, game. Yeah, Another yeah, the code. forum avatars. It, it, it yeah. was like in the Pantheon next to Phoenix Wright and yes. Hotel Dusk. Yeah. And like the, I didn't the even more, think about that. The more adult DS games for people who kind of wanted something more interesting yeah, like for their click, new click age game. you know when you get becoming a teenager becoming adults you're like seek out new stuff and a lot of people play this and were like this is neat i have never played a game like this before uh so this is a bit nostalgic for me to like, kind of see them you know go back to this yeah the, even though i never played it the, i saw you played a little bit recently actually on your ds yeah the forum era the uh, forum era i like that because i also remember that people had like little another code yes. avatars. That's really funny. That game though, it's interesting. It looks nice. I think they uh, translated the uh, the artwork yeah. very well. If you've never 3D. seen it, you should check out the DS game. It's, it's it looks very different from this new one. This is like a it has some remake. early 3D graphics. Yeah, pre render pre render stuff. stuff. It looks awesome. A little bit of mist vibes. Yes. A little bit of mist vibes. So that's basically what you can expect from it, I think. Mist is, of course, a lot more obtuse. Yeah. I think this for, is an, more like for a, a new graphic player. Graphic novel. Yes. Uh, it is dialogue a. Dialogue heavy. Yeah. But, but it has some puzzles that are clever and a bit challenging. Maybe to, I should to play finish. it now, you know? Maybe. Should finally do it. Yeah. <laughs> this might be the time. But I think that just goes to show that. Things aren't impossible. Even Maybe the, we'll even, see Endless Ocean 3. Yeah, yes. Like, even the most forgotten Nintendo title can return. Um, Without much of a demand for it, really. I, I've yeah. never seen anyone I've never ever seen go, anyone another code real release, please. Yeah, please, remake them. Because these are full-on remakes. Yeah. They're entirely made up from the ground. Uh, Is the Wii one too? I never... Seen, I don't know that one, one actually. The... Maybe it's based on something like that. Maybe it is. I don't know. Although the main character in these games is also hella homosexual. Oh, yeah, that's uh, gay he in the second game she ha has a like a red flannel shirt and she looks so fucking <laughs> you, you lesbian. You saw that and you're like, yeah, she's lesbian. <laughs> she's such a like she looks so lesbian in that one, and it's funny to me. It's that's great. really great. Paper Mario Thousand Year Door is coming back. If it wasn't F-Zero or another code, I, I mean, this one's gotta be it. This one's gotta be Nintendo so showing, yes, we know. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> 
We know no. you want this. We know you're screaming about this. We know you hate Paper Mario now. We know this is the only one you like for some reason. We know it. Here. Here you go. Here's my hand. Eat, Eat from it. Oh, Eat it's from that, it. that weird dough meme. Thank you. I owe you my life. <laughs> that weird. You know, I have nothing to say about this. I've tr- I've started playing the Thousand Year Door twice. And mm. I just kind of feel like, I don't know. And it's always by Hooktail. That's where the you dragon. fall off. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, like, I played... We got the fir- to the burping part. I, so, I played where the first, he's like, oh. I played the first Paper Mario it's when I was, like, 15. Nauseous. And I think at that time, it was just like, yeah, this is kind of neat. But even then, it was just like, not as good as Chrono Trigger. That's the thing about Paper Mario, I think, that what people tend to forget is that the Paper Mario games and most of the Mario RPG games are baby's first RPG. Like, they are meant to be introductions to the RPG genre. They're meant to be like, here, start this off. Then you can go play Final Fantasy or or like Mystic Arc. Terranigma. Or how about Chrono Trigger? A bit more of a big boys game. <laughs> but like Paper Mario grown-ups. Paper Mario is of course like just a you see it has small numbers. It doesn't have a lot of stats and all that it's stuff. It's a lot of it's reaction very... stuff that yeah. makes it more active. Yes. It's chapter based is kinda like a little snippets. You, yeah. you know, like not even the characters are very substantial. You get a new companion for every chapter and after yeah. that fuck off you don't <laughs> you don't matter anymore and they have their little own stories and all yeah, that so, stuff so and it's just uh, it's easy to remember nice everything stuff. that happens i think paper mario the thousand year door first of all i played that all the way back when it came out yeah and i finished it because i'm a real gamer yeah, I, like if i played it back then i would have loved finished it, it. yes but, and like right now it's just kind of like uh... you finished the uh, nintendo 64 one though yeah back when i was yeah. 15 and uh... that's when i played Paper Mario 2 instead. Yeah. I would say those games are very similar. Yeah, uh, they are. They kind of just follow the same I mean, I've tracks. seen a lot from it. Yeah, so yeah. I know a lot about the game. It's just kind of like that I... I think this was always going to happen. Yes. At some point. Because like we are at a point where they have released three other games in the series that are more like Sticker Star and whatnot. This is like... Most of the series at this point yeah. is not like this game. And I think we've gotten to the point where GameCube nostalgia is at its all-time high. The nostalgia circle always hits a little later than the demand peaks. Because these corporations need to kind of respond to our demand budget for and develop stuff and everything. So now... A lot of like young 20 ish people are being like, I remember the Wii. And, and us who are like, I remember Nintendo 64 and GameCube. <laughs> we're past 30 now, and now we're being like pampered. And it yeah. just feels like, you know, I remember when they pampered the NES era yes. stuff. <laughs> then they did it so much, and it felt like, do I even matter, you know? <laughs> and th- that's going to keep happening forever. The cycle is always a little bit too slow because you can't just hit it immediately. Yeah. It's uh, around when you're 30 that you're going to see your beloved old games come back in like full force. But at that time, you're not going to care anymore. You're going to be like, huh, neat, yeah. Pikmin. I, I already have that own game. it. <laughs> like the thing is that we already own Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. I don't think I will yeah. buy this we one. We own that game, Pikmin. <laughs> own those yeah. metroid prime earlier this year i mean i'm i own that you know yeah since it we came play out those. <laughs> it's like you know this is not necessarily for us uh it i can play paper mario if i want to can do it right now yeah while and I think recording that, this and you know that's always the, the thing if this one sells well i think you're gonna see more of the Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door formula in the newer games. Maybe. I mean, they've, I guess been, a bit they've more. been leaning towards that. Yeah, they've the, been leaning the, the towards it. The thing is, they can't 100% follow fan demand. That's no. not reasonable. But 
They know about it. They clearly it. know about it. They know about it. I can bet your ass they the, heard All the conspiracy so theories that Miyamoto hates stories. Yeah. He has sabotaged this shit. They're trying to use, put it in a crapper. Tezuka is a, is a fucking... Destroy uh, Paper yeah. Mario. You know, because it's not necessarily... Of course, the fan demand is not just about Paper Mario a Thousand Year Door coming back. Because you could play that if you wanted to. Like, you can emulate that game Right now. You don't need them to remaster or remake it. This is gonna make them shut up for a little while. But if the next one doesn't have more of that, then it's just gonna continue in a bad cycle. I still think that the new Paper Mario games are fun on their own. I think they are really nice little adventure games. Just like Paper Mario and A Thousand Year Door perfectly fine games on their own like i don't necessarily want the same thing over and over again that's not really what i'm all about (laughs) to me it's like i got those two games it's fine i don't need more of that but i guess that's the thing when you get really hard into a into a fandom if you're really really just like this is me i am a paper mario fan i'm a metroid fan i'm a Donkey Kong fan. If I don't get what I want, I No, if that happens and you're so focused on it and it's like every Nintendo Direct, you're like, new Donkey Kong. This time, it's gonna happen. Of course you're gonna get mad and angry and and just irritated. Disappointed. Like, for me personally, I think I've just hit that point. I don't really care. I think it's fine when it's like five to ten years between games because it feels nice to just have that comeback moment. It's like, a, like oh, that an one. old friend. Yeah, an old friend. Look at that. Because like I don't personally look at these games that are not the top tier Nintendo games in terms of sales like Mario or Zelda. They're not going to get that attention anyway. Oh. So it's like... I play so many different games Mm. that at this point I couldn't even imagine being so deep into one fandom where I'm like, I am a Donkey Kong fan. This hurts me personally. (laughs) I've been there myself. I was angry about Paper Mario before. Once upon a time. Once upon a time. But then I just kind of stopped. You became a fan for a reason. There were some games you played that you enjoyed. You liked it. You want more of that, of course. But, like, maybe the most healthy approach is to just kind of look at... Th- there are certain games here that I like, and if they make more, sure, nice, I'll play those. But that's not what I actually fell in love with. Because they won't go away. I, they, they won't go away. I think, though, we, we might, uh, importantly, be in some kind of good Paper Mario times. Because you know how Earthbound basically birthed a lot of new... Earthbound like games. The same thing happened with Paper Mario. We got a bunch of games that are inspired by Paper Mario. And I think fans probably do best actually exploring those games instead. I know they're not Paper Mario, but like if you're really that thirsty for something and you really can't satiate that without being angry, then maybe. Maybe those other people who also, instead of being mad about Paper Mario, they said, fuck it, I'm going to do it myself. Maybe take solace in their work. (laughs) But now you have Thousand Year Door, which uh, also brings us into uh, an important part. I think this means that you're not going to see Nintendo GameCube games on NSO anytime soon. It's not we're gonna talking, be a GameCube service for it. We're probably I never expected yeah, it. Yeah, we're never. I, I don't think we're ever gonna see it. No. I think there are too many uh, logistical problems, especially file size. We're talking the difference between a, a few, few megabytes, a few megabytes yeah. uh, on on the on the Nintendo sixty four. Nintendo sixty four cartridges were small. Yeah, and then we have the GameCube, where some games are up to one gigabyte. One gigabyte. The games are downloaded to yeah. the system. With They're, not They're not cloud-based. They're not cloud-based. They just need to connect with the internet like once a week to check yeah. that you still have a subscription. Every time a new game comes out, there's an update to the system that downloads this stuff. And of course, some games have DLC, patch, whatever, that, that go up to pretty high numbers. But I think Nintendo are get kind of apprehensive about doing that. A GameCube service would, every time, 
is hoard more and more gigabytes. Like if you think about it, if you get to the point where you have like 30 GameCube games, that's 30 gigabytes ish. But I think more importantly, even ignoring the logistical part, is that Nintendo has certain prescribed values to their games. That's why they don't always shove everything out all in one go. Yeah, there's perceived value. And I think the line goes by GameCube, where they can take a GameCube game, maybe give it a new, spruce it up, a little bit of fresh coat of paint or like, Pair it with its sequel, Pikmin, for yeah. example. And then you can sell it again, full price. Same goes for the Wii. And that's also why we have a Game Boy Advance remake now. And also we have had DS. I just uh, think those are a little bit more substantial. The thing yeah. is that I think people forget that despite us, of course, wanting old games available, most people don't want to buy old games. Yeah. Like looking at NES, Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64, people don't want to buy these piecemeal too generally old. because they're too old, because they look ugly, all that stuff. And then we have the GameCube games. They're right on the verge where games are starting to become modern enough. Yeah, they are more modern. Yes. A lot of those games. They're more Some presentable. Are, like, I would say like Luigi's Mansion Pikmin are weirdly arcade-like Yes, <laughs> for, for their time. But a lot of those games still kind of adhere to a modern design sensibility, especially considering Nintendo who never really got deep on the whole games as a service, loot box, microtransaction <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. The GameCube games and forward are very in line with that. In fact, I would say even Nintendo 64 games are that. It's just that they're not very graphically intense or like, you know, they, they don't really adhere to modern sensibilities as much. But like... Because that's the first time you go into 3D. You can 3D. go back as far as the NES in some cases and find games that used... You can feel the DNA straight from there to modern day Nintendo. Like Star Crop is a game that like, give it a nice coat of paint. You could do like with Link's Awakening easy no problems there are some games even back then that just kind of work have in that, that sense. stuff but a general audience don't really want to pay for that stuff no but the gamecube games are at that threshold where they are modern enough and they're easy to spruce up you can put them in it's a new color of paint demand for it yeah and and as we're seeing right now they're doing this with several games there's the metroid prime one there's Pikmin. The, the Pikmin games and now the Paper Mario game. The point is, I think, that we shouldn't expect them to put GameCube games, especially not as the next one. I think the next logical step is Nintendo DS. And you're going to ask, how would they do that? We just wait for the next console, guys. It's not going to be on the Switch. It's going to be yeah. the next one. It's going to be gonna the next one. It's going to have some solution. We're not going to predict that because we can't predict it. No. But it's going to have... Because Nintendo likes Switch Online service. I think that makes them way more money than Virtual Console ever did because we got to keep paying for it. They're going to keep going. Uh, th- and I they're think gonna it's going to... Yeah, it's going to... They know that their well is running dry. They want to add more stuff, more systems. So DS is the most logical next one, but they can't do it right now. Yeah. They need to find a solution. And since people are anyway thinking that the Switch 2 is coming out real soon, you could imagine that they're going to stick with the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy apps until then. And DS is the logical one. Although, Although. Turbo Graphics. What is going on with Metroid Prime 4? Same as always. Yeah. Same fucking thing as always. Okay, so here is the thing. This is like my biggest pet peeve ever. People have asked for this game for so long. And I think just like everyone is saying, of course, Switch 2 is coming. I don't think that this game is going to be released on the Switch 2. And I don't think that you're going to see this game before it is finished and ready. Yeah, that's my biggest thing. They, they announced it too early, clearly. Yeah. Because they didn't show more than a logo. Yeah. So it was <laughs> like, that it hadn't even fucking begun the Bandai Nam, who were supposedly developing it, it went down a shitter. Nintendo said, fuck you. Retro Studios, you gotta make this. So yeah. it was January 2019. 
they come clean. They make it like an apology video. It's like, holy shit, something's gone wrong. Yeah. Who died? They <laughs> announced that they restarted the development. Yes. They had to restart a new game development cycle. Games take a long time to make. And they had a choice back then. They could either be completely transparent and have like concurrent updates on like, here's what's happening with Metroid Prime 4. But clearly, they didn't do that. I think their approach then is clear. They disappointed people with this. They fucked up. They knew that this is a game we've showcased, we announced, and it's going to be so long until it comes out that people are going to wonder what the fuck happened. So that's why they say this. When you see this game again, it's not going to be a fucking teaser. No, no way. You're going to get a date. Yes. You're going to see the game in motion. And that date is going to be way sooner than you you think. Because they're waiting until like last minute to know that that date is firm. I can almost guarantee you that this is going to happen before the Switch 2. I don't think they're going to expect you to buy another system for this game. I don't think it's going to be a Zelda situation where they push it over and it's a double release, you know, like Twilight Princess or Breath of the Wild. I think partly because Metroid is not a system seller. There was a promise here. Just like with Breath of the Wild and that, you know, the reason why they pushed it over to both is because they made a promise. But I think this game is different. This was promised specifically here. It's gonna come out for the Switch. Like, I have I have no doubts about that. And that might come back and bite me in the ass. But, like, I think this is probably gonna be one of the last Switch games. Even if it is the last one, I think they're gonna be firm and adamant that it's gonna be a Switch game. They're not gonna, you yeah. know make it a next gen thing four and a half years since they started again from scrap of course the idea of making a metroid prime 4 was always there from the beginning so it had a little bit of probably there was like some stuff they 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 they, they could take from the scrap project but i think there was also like a little bit of like post-mortem on that just kind of see what went wrong but four and a half years from like scratch is not too long in AAA game development time. That's pretty regular. Like maybe now is when you would start hearing about the game. No. In trailers and everything. Uh, I want to be bold because people are expecting the announcement of the next Nintendo system to be this year or in the beginning of next year. Maybe. And I don't think that's gonna happen. There's always the murmurs and rumors of a new Nintendo system or like a Switch Pro upgrade or anything. Last time we had the Switch Pro thing, it turned out to be the Switch OLED. Yeah. Uh, You know, like temporary expectations. But now there are murmurs again. Something about, yeah, we saw it on Gamescom. Yeah, and everyone seems to have closed doors. People are talking about the Nintendo NX a long time. Yeah, they a did. A long time before the Switch came out, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think this might just kind of be the start of that. We haven't heard anything of manufacturing. I don't think they're going to show it this year. I think it's too early. Uh, usually, like, when you start making, like, a console, raw numbers, you know, you need a lot of these units. You need a lot of... You can't make a game console in secret anymore. The world is connected. Someone will know when, oops, Nintendo bought 10,000 of these components from this factory. Like, the, you know, we will know. It's coming, of course. It's always, Nintendo always work on the next console. That's just R&D. How uh, it works. How it works. But like, is it coming next year? Maybe. You know what? I'm going to be this obnoxious motherfucker. Everyone's like, oh, it's happening. Oh, we're so excited. Oh, it's going to happen soon. I think... Metro Prime 4 is going to be released in October next year. And there is not going to be a Switch 2 during that period. You're not going to see the Switch 2 until 2025. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. It's not going to be Switch 2. It's going to be Switch Pro. It's going to be the just Switch Just watch Pro. them do that. It, it's like that's just the perfect storm, you know. <laughs> People were clamoring for a Switch Pro for years. And then they gave up. It's like, I guess it's not happening. It's going to be Switch 2. And that's when you get Switch Pro. That's always what happens. Future proofing for two more years, Nintendo says. Yeah. <laughs> it is funny, though, because my prediction, at least my spiteful prediction, might be more in line with their 10-year 
I like think the ten year plan is kind of, plan. kind of serious as well, considering how well things are going. The Mario. The, here's another thing: people are always looking at the financial reports and everything. That like last year, things were getting a bit slower. And they were. That was because they delayed the Mario movie and the Zelda game that was predicted to come out in 2022 <laughs> were, was moved to 2023. Yeah. Which made this year instead uh, like a bomb explosion it's like holy fucking shit people are buying switches in droves i think that's a pretty reasonable thing to kind of accommodate for that like well we made a movie everyone fucking saw it your a mother lot of saw people it. went and my mom did not see it a lot of people <laughs> went and bought switches because they're like i remember more you want to play like you you boosted the demographic you gotta be careful with that you can't just take that the big promotional thing. This holiday season is going to see a shit ton of switches underneath the Christmas trees. That's not the time to release a new console. I'm sorry. No, I don't think so. I think especially now where you're like, this year you have a new Mario game and a new Zelda game. This is like 2017. Two. You know, yeah, <laughs> basically. Like, this is like that year where it's... They're doing fine this year. I can guarantee you that. Just to be that motherfucker who is like dampering their own hype, putting themselves in an ice cube and like, you're so cold. You're so cold that you're just like, the Switch 2 is probably going to come out in in a year. <laughs> Something like that. Because like I think it's better to always temper your expectations. Just take it, whatever you think is going to happen. What you feel and in add your gut. five months. <laughs> add time to it. Add... Add another half year to that prediction. And if it is if something like, like Star Fox, add another five years. Yeah. Yes. If it is a Star Fox game, add another five years. Uh, you're going to see it, though, on the new Switch as a as a remaster. Uh, the, the Wii U version, of course. But who knows? Maybe we're wrong. And maybe next time we will talk about that yeah. if they suddenly announce something. I don't know when we will be back. Maybe it will be the next Direct in like five months or something. You can never know for certain. Yeah, you but can never you know. But what you can know for certain is that you should always temper your expectations. Temper, not temper. I did say temper. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> This has been a podcast made by Kiki and Alicia. We are making videos on Transparency Boo, the YouTube channel where we talk about the most weird things imaginable, I think. We interpret your favorite Nintendo games from perspectives that you might not expect, like the time we made a feminist reading of Donkey Kong Country 3. Yes, it makes a lot more sense than you think. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye.